Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In today's VS Code tutorial, you will learn how to use Git inside of VS Code, how to clone repository, how to update it, commit it, push it, pull it. You'll learn a lot. But before we do that, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. The first thing you'll need when you're working with Git inside of VS Code is the repo URL. So I've created this simple VS Code Git repo. There's only readme and index.html and we'll be checking this out, making some changes, commenting them, pushing them, and just the general workflow of how you work with Git inside of VS Code. Okay, so the first thing we'll do, we'll click on this green clone or download button and copy this URL. And that's what we'll use when we jump to the VS Code and inside of the welcome page, we'll click on the clone git repository, we'll click on that, we'll paste the URL in, hit enter, and now we need to specify the path where we want to save our files. I'll copy paste the URL of my folder, and this is the location where I want my files to be saved on my local computer. I hit enter, and now you saw the message cloning git repository down here. Would you like to open clone repository and we'll click open repository. Now we have the local version of these files. We can make any changes to them and then we can commit them into the repo. So let's say that we want to delete this line of code and save the index.html. Now, when you go to the Git tab, you'll see that there are some changes, okay? So when we click on the changes, it shows us exactly what happened. So the minus means that the line was deleted and this is our version. So on the left is the version from Git and on the right side is our local version. If we revert back the change, save it, you'll see that the notification of the changes goes away. Also, if we save it, we can revert the changes by clicking on this arrow back, discard changes. It will be the same thing as if we revert back to how the repo was when we cloned it initially. If we just change the name here and save it, you'll see this blue line over here. And that means that the file has been modified. If we delete a file, Let's say I delete the readme file for now. You'll see that the change is jumping to two and the readme is deleted. Okay, I don't want to delete it. I want to revert it back. So I click on the discard changes and the file is downloaded back. Now we will explore the Git interface in more detail. This thick button means that we can commit our changes this one will refresh, so it will synchronize. And these three dots are hiding the remaining Git commands, the most frequently used. And if you want to see what is happening under the hood, when you're pressing some of these buttons, you can click on the show Git output. And here is a log of all the commands. So this is handy if you want to learn exactly which of the Git commands are executed. Now we will edit the file. We'll add one more paragraph. Peter was here and we will save the changes and we want to commit them. Okay, so we will go to the message and with every commit, you should be writing some meaningful message. What has changed? Extra paragraph. And then we can commit by pressing command and enter. Okay, so command and enter. It's the same thing as if you would click on this icon, but I prefer the keyboard shortcut command and enter. And that is synchronizing our changes. As you can see down bottom here, we see that there is no changes to pull, but one change to push. Okay, so we just changed, we just committed it locally. And for us to be able to see the changes in the actual repo, we need to push our changes. Okay, so we click on push and the changes are synchronized. Once it's done, you'll see there are no changes and we will see the Peter was here inside of our repo. 
if we refresh the page, the index.html has the Peter was here change. Now let's pretend that someone else was working on this project, made some changes to it, and we want to get the latest changes. Okay, so somebody, somebody else was here. We will save the file, commit the changes without any message, and now inside of our VS Code, we want to get the latest code and update our local version to whatever's inside of the master. We can simply click on the drop down, click on pull, and that should get the latest version from the server and update our local files. Now we have the somebody else was here, and this is how you pull the latest code from the server. And that's it all for today. Hope you've enjoyed this mini series about VS Code. I would really like to know what you thought about these last five videos. Let me know if you have any questions or favorite extensions. I want to see your comment down below. Until next time, happy coding. Bye.